Thank you, Pastor Dan. I didn't know where to begin writing a speech, so I consulted the internet <laughs> and Google how to write a best man's <laughs> And the internet gave me all sorts of hot tips, like keep it brief, and don't make it about yourself, and make it funny. But these are unprecedented times. <laughs>
let's just like say there are childhood and a lot of movie references, uh, quotes, and recently the action sequences from movies we probably shouldn't have watched. But we are thankful we could have watched them nonetheless. Now we're going to fast forward many movie quotes, many battle sequences later, skipping mundane de details like Anna's birth. And, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll skip to Anna's graduation, college graduation. So now we're at uh, Miami University, May 2017. Um, sadly, we're a Miami majority family. Um, though Ron and Kate uh, both are alumni. Fun fact, they never met in college, but they have like all the same friends or something. <laughs> um, you, you explain. Um, also, I see some of you put your glasses down. <laughs> this is still the test. I'm no longer at the rule breaking trailblazer. <laughs> this is no longer the toast. Um, and this is uh, no longer the toast because throughout the speech, I've grown as a person. <laughs> and that's a sign of a good speech. We'll toast it. <laughs> and there's a lesson to be had there. Because not everything you plan is going to work out how you plan. You've got to be flexible while learning to embrace the rules. And that's best man speech lesson number one. And if I got the jumbo projector and the screen that I requested, <laughs> this is where it would say best man speech lesson number one in capital letters. Be flexible and forgiving. <laughs> and now is when you should all get impressed and say, wow, this speech has lessons. And all good speeches have lessons. <laughs> Okay, so going back to Anna's graduation. <laughs> Sorry to take that detour. Um, we're having a great time, and uh, at this point, uh, Kate probably been dating for a little while, and um, you know, every, every time we get time, and Kate pulls me aside, and she says, "If Raleigh and I move in together, is there anything I should know beforehand?" And I said, "No, Kate." I'm not going to lie to you. And that was the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking, oh, Raleigh and Kate didn't say moving in together for marriage. But for the purposes of this speech, we can all pretend that they will move in together after this wedding. <laughs> and I will give them all the advice on how to live with Raleigh. And Kate can pretend like it's not like too little too late. <laughs> Hopefully you can glean some new tips. <laughs> now when, when you're giving advice like this, uh, you, you have to know your audience. So I decided to do a little background check on Kate. Of course, I've known Kate for years now, but it never hurts to do a little digging. <laughs> so dig, I did. And I know you're not supposed to dig up dirt on the bride at her own wedding, but this brings us to best man speech lesson number two. Spare no one. <laughs> I returned back to the internet. The very same internet I previously said not to. <laughs> and I Google searched Kate McCauley Walgreens. <laughs> you don't just search Kate McCauley because then you'll get her Facebook or her Instagram, and she keeps a tight watch over those. <laughs> She'd be expecting that. <laughs> As a general rule, if you want to get the dirt on someone, you got to find their employment. <laughs> And boy, oh boy, the food will deliver. <laughs> because if you search Kate McCauley Walgreens, you'll find a nice little sit-down interview Kate did with the path to purchases. <laughs> Commander is one of her, her people to watch in business in 2016. Oh, yes, Kate. Google, because I find this nice little sit-down interview. 
And in this interview, she's featured as a whiz kid of corporate space management. And I quote, Macaulay likes wide open spaces, organizing them, and using them for efficient traffic movement. <laughs> She's taken the lead and found massive success at the helms of Walgreens Space Optimization. <laughs> Excellent work, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and as I read this glowing feature on Kate, my mind kept on drifting back to her. <laughs> and I couldn't help but notice that the path to purchase institute has yet to sit down Raleigh for a tell-all <laughs> There's still time for you to make the list of people to watch for 2020. <laughs> but if we're honest, corporate space optimization probably isn't a strong suit. I say this is Raleigh's roommate of like, 16 years. <laughs> All of this is taken. <laughs> For your new marital home, I have some tips and pointers on space optimization when it comes to living with Raleigh for all those years. So here we go. The first one you want to cover is how to arrange your bedroom, because Raleigh and I shared a bedroom. Um, we, of course, had two separate beds, which is what I prefer, so I wouldn't leave it off the table. <laughs> In terms of arranging these beds, you'll have a number of different options. One is the bunk bed configuration. Uh, that's the one we used uh, when I got out of the crib. <laughs> But if you guys decide to go that route, you'll have to rotate who's got top bunk and who's got bottom bunk every two weeks, just to make sure everything's good. Another option is to have two beds side by side, which we also did when we disassembled the bunk beds. Um, and you think that by having side-by-side -side beds, you could stop rotating every two weeks. <laughs> but you'd be wrong. <laughs> you might even try to claim one bed and say, Hey, this one's no different from the other. Why not call this one mine? But that would imply that you have something that Raleigh does not. <laughs> and that just can't happen. <laughs> You might even appeal to your parents and say, hey, how do we make this fair? And they'll say, why don't you switch beds? <laughs> and so we switched beds every two weeks until Raleigh graduated. <laughs> Which brings us to best man speech lesson number three. Be fair, but you don't have to be legalistic. <laughs> And in case you were wondering, yes, these were the same beds we had as toddlers. And we became six foot plus adults. Fortunately, the footboards had holes in them. And you could stick your feet through. Okay, so that's beds. Or you guys can keep doing what you're doing with the, the king size. But, yeah, I just want to make sure you have all your options. <laughs> the next order of business is possessions. Kate, you're going to have to let go of prized possessions. Especially if they're things that he also wants. So if you share something like a Razor scooter, a Nintendo 64, or an Xbox, there will come a day where he'll want to borrow it and take it over to a friend's house. And then you'll never see it again. <laughs> If it's something like a necklace, you'll, you'll probably be fine. Uh, but anything you share, forget about it. But there's a certain kind of equilibrium with Raleigh and possessions. For everything you stand to lose, you will also mysteriously acquire. The Jones family is not here, but this is a good time to announce that we have all of your GameCube controllers. <laughs> Yes, we lost the Nintendo 64, but we effectively gained the GameCube. <laughs> Just don't pay close attention to that. That's best man's speech lesson number four.
Let go of earthly possessions. <laughs> or at the very least, just don't look too close at the sword. If you do have something you want to keep, we do have a system in place that the family has developed over the years. And it mostly involves hiding things out of sight. <laughs> but you have to know where he's not going to look. For example, with leftovers, you're going to want to do a two Tupperware type of system. <laughs> you're going to want to put one set front and center where he'll, he'll find it, and you put the other set in the vegetable room. <laughs> I, I may have blown a big family secret there, but we've been doing that for years, and it always goes. Let me give you another example. When Rob was in high school, and his grades were taking a hit for playing too much Halo 2. We had to hide the Xbox power cord. But if anybody ever needed to use the Xbox, we knew that it was safely stowed away amongst the clean, folded linens. We would never look at it. Here's some other ideas that we never tried, but you might find useful, Kate. You could hide the brown liquor in the laundry hamper. <laughs> the tobacco dip behind the kitchen spices. <laughs> or a paintball gun on top of the china cabinet. <laughs> not that you'd ever want to own a paintball gun because we're in suburbia. We're not hillbillies. <laughs> but if you did want to have one, I'm sure it probably would void the warranty on it. <laughs> so hide the paintball gun on top of the china cabinet, or better yet, just rent whenever you go. <laughs> but what I want to do say, uh, with these kind of dumb things that don't matter, like Razor scooters and Nintendo 64s, you know, Rod can drive you nuts, but he knows in his heart when he's supposed to care. Um, and Kate, you couldn't have picked a more supportive husband. Like a karate club in a strip mall, he'll always be there. <laughs> no matter the time, location, or circumstance. And he'll look for ways to surprise you with his kindness. When Raleigh went off to the military while I was in college, uh, and I didn't have a whole lot of money, he gave me his car. And he didn't have to. He could have sold it kept it for cash, and I couldn't really afford a car, and I actually really needed the help at the time. To be fair, he was able to get that car with his sweet, sweet caddy money <laughs> that he was pulling at the country club, which is you know, how he could afford the car in the first place. But it was very thoughtful for him to give me a gift at a time when I really didn't have that. On the topic of golf club, Caddy. Members of his college caddy fraternal organization are even here with us tonight. They don't like it when you call it that. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> they all live together in a house. And they're all friends today. Though they no longer carry bags on the course, they are still united by the bags they carry on the course. <laughs> All of which to say, Raleigh, you could not have found anyone more out of your league than me. <laughs> She's been such an amazing part of this family these past few years. And tonight, I'm so happy to make it official. She's funny, she's kind, she's thoughtful, and she's always a joy to be. Now lift up your glasses for the real toast. To Kate and Raleigh, here's to a joyful marriage, to true love, to commitment to each other, and to being there, and to your best days to come in your new lives together as husband and wife. Cheers. Cheers.